uh, very much for coming to this symposium, which we have titled as our second genome. Um, I'm not going to give a full-length talk. Essentially, what I'm going to do is to introduce uh, what we mean by our second genome, followed by three technical talks, followed by a project that's being uh, thought about at the national level, and then we will have a discussion uh, at the end. So um, at the end of each talk, we will not have any discussion. Uh, among the speakers because there is a large amount of overlap uh, of the kinds of uh, concepts that will be used in these talks. So it's not only the second genome, it's actually the bigger genome that we are talking about. The word microbiome was introduced into the literature by Joshua Lederberg. Joshua Lederberg, as uh, all of us know, is a Nobel laureate. He uh, discovered uh, sexual reproduction in bacteria. He introduced the concept of transduction, horizontal transfer by bacteriophages from one bacterium to another, and so on, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Uh, the word was coined by Joshua Lederberg, and what he meant by this term is the ecological community of commensal, things that reside on our body but cause us no harm, symbiotic, where we derive benefit from them and they derive benefit from us, and pathogenic, they cause us diseases. So, so the ecological community of commensal, symbiotic, and pathogenic microorganisms that literally share our body space um, and have all but been ignored as determinants of health and disease. So he coined the term microbiome and he appealed to the community to initiate research on the microbiome. And this research has been initiated and you will get a glimpse of this research uh, in the, in the com coming three talks. Uh, the places in the body um, where the microorganisms, pre microorganisms predominantly reside um, are, are, are these different uh, regions of the body, the nose uh, and the upper respiratory tract, the eyes, the mouth, uh, the skin, and the, and the large intestine. Uh, we will, of course, have separate talks on the skin and the gut. Um, later in the um, in the session and urinary and gen genital systems. So essentially, not all parts of the body are uni uniformly covered by um, uh, by microorganisms. Microorganisms, but there are um, places in the body or specific organs where they thrive and populate. Uh, the diversity of microorganisms across uh, body regions are variable. So if you look at, uh, you don't have to, these are, these are different, uh, different uh, gen genera, but you don't really have to look at that. All that you need to look at is that uh, the pie charts and what, where you can see that the colors are of different uh, magnitudes. Or if you focus your attention to one particular color, let's say the red, they don't appear uniformly across the different body parts. So there is the diversity of microbiome across or different types of uh, genera of the microbiome across uh, body regions. Um, these include um, species from each of the major domains, and the major domains uh, that I've listed here are archaea. So th there are multiple types of archaea that form a well-knit uh, phylogenetic group. Uh, there are bacteria and there are eukaryotes. The uh, b bacteria and archaea are um, characterized by not having any nucleus, and um, there are these e eukaryotes who have a nucleus. Um, many of these microorganisms cannot be cultured outside of the body. They are called unculturable. And so uh, even though we had a rough idea as to what the nature of the microbiome was, the nature of the microorganisms were, through the culture media and through the culturing procedure, we did not have a complete um, uh, knowledge of, of um, uh, what these micro the, the microorganisms are in our body. Uh, now the technologies have become available, so even without culturing, we are able to figure out which kind of uh, species uh, of bacteria or microorganism th uh, survives or thrives in one body part. So it's essentially called next generation DNA sequencing. So using DNA evidence, we, even though we cannot culture these bacteria in a Petri dish, uh, we are able to figure out what kind of bacteria these are. Um, also, we've recognized through these kinds of um, uh, technology platforms that there is diversity not only within the same individual uh, across different body parts, but if you focus your attention on a specific body part, uh, there is diversity across individuals that and this is real data. These are two individuals, one specific body part, and you can see that um, uh, in, uh, across these two individuals, even in the same body part, there, is, uh, there are uh, large differences and significantly large differences. 
so the, in, the, the reason why there is so much of diversity within um, an individual and between individuals is because of the um, uh, individual ba genetic background, uh, the, the microbiome and the individual genetic background, they interact. And uh, then it also interacts with the environment in terms of the diet, especially the gut microbiome, uh, microbiome is influenced by the diet. Um, essentially, in, in, the, in uh, the microbiome, as I said, or as Joshua Lederberg pointed out, plays a major role in both health and disease. In health, there is homeostasis between or among the, uh, the, the, the two genomes, the human genome and the micro, microbial genome. The, uh, this homeostasis, uh, homeostasis l lets us uh, live peaceful, peacefully, maintain health, and so on. And when there is uh, perturbation of this hom homeostasis, uh, various kinds of diseases arise, and it's, uh, we need to understand um, the various kinds of diseases as a result of these perturbations. And if we can understand the perturbations, maybe we'll be able to control the perturbations um, externally using other kinds of external factors such as diet or uh, medication and so on. So the understanding of the relationship of our second genome with that of our own genome is just beginning to emerge. And um, uh, the, the, uh, in its, uh, the DNA sequences, like I said, have been used to categorize organisms into taxonomic groups from the broadest to a domain to the narrowest to a species. Uh, two organ organisms from different domains would have less DNA sequence similarity than between organisms that belong to the same domain. So we can study within um, uh, domain diversity and we can also study between domain diversity. Um, like I said, there are uh, multiple things that impinge on uh, the nature of the microbiome within the human body and across different individuals. Um, variation in the microbiome LPS immunogenicity uh, contributes to autoimmunity in humans, so the perturbation um, uh, contributes to autoimmunity. Uh, the host genetics plays a role in the gut microbiome. Uh, again, something that will be uh, talked about uh, later in this session. Temporal and spatial variation of the human microbiota during pregnancy, but uh, we will not touch upon pregnancy, but uh, 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 temporal and spatial variation in skin uh, will be talked about in this particular session. So overall, we are poised to have um, uh, um, an interesting feast of various kinds of data from different parts of the human body on uh, the microorganisms that uh, uh, that are present. So we have talks by uh, Dr. Sharmila Mande, and I'm not going to come back here and introduce the various speakers. Sharmila Mande is um, one of our most active researchers in the gut microbiome, in the microbiome area in general, and she's with the uh, TCS in Pune, and she heads the research component of the TCS in Pune. Um, up until recently, up until a few years ago, she was at the TCS research component uh, in Hyderabad. Um, uh, Vinit Sharma uh, graduated from the, uh, in bioinformatics from the Institute of Genomics and um, Integrative Biology, right now is a faculty member in this institute and works on uh, metagenomics or um, the microbiome and systems biology in this institute and has set up a group here and he will talk to us about novel insights into the human microbiome. Uh, Shobhik Mukherjee and I, we work as a team. He leads the team uh, on the microbiome of the skin, and uh, he will present some data on, um, on the skin types uh, and in relation to the physiology of the skin. Um, the last talk will be by uh, Dr. Shekhar Mande, who is uh, conceived of a major national project called the National Human Microbiome Project, and um, he will uh, talk to us about why this is necess necessary, why the project is necessary, what may be the outcomes of the project, and how he's conceived of organization of this project. And, the, and at the end, we will have a, a, a discussion on all of these talks, as also uh, the National hum Human Microbiome Project that has been conceived. So